Welcome to your weekly UAS news update. This is the Christmas edition, the week of December 20th. And uh, this week, we're actually excited. We get four topics that we're going to talk about. The first one is the uh, involves the DSPA, the Drone Service Provider Alliance. Uh, they've been doing some work with the city of Seattle. And I want to tell you a little bit more about the process. Actually, we're going to bring Vigmas on board to talk about it. Uh, the next story is kind of a big one. This is uh, from the FA. If you've been following the story about flying over people, the need for having a uh, means of compliance in a Category 2 and a Category 3 drone, well, there's been a major update with somebody being approved for a means of compliance. So we'll talk about what it means and kind of, well, the implication for all of us. The next thing we're going to talk about is the drone that's on Mars. It's actually been on Mars for like eight months now, and it's flying, and it's been flying for a while. So we'll talk about the details. And then lastly, we'll give you a quick update on Pilot Institute and Trust and a bunch of other things that we've been doing. So Merry Christmas. Let's get to it. All right, and for this first segment, we have a guest, I should say an esteemed guest. We have Vic Moss from the Drone Service Provider Alliance. It's always great to see Vic on the show because, well, he's full of great information. And, uh, and today we're going to talk about something that happened in Seattle. So Vic, welcome to the show and tell us a little bit about what happened in Seattle this week. Well, thank you, Greg. Thanks always for the invite. Um, it's always fun to be on your show. Um, and actually, we can thank Pilot Institute for what happened in Seattle this week. Um, we had one of your students. Uh, his name is uh, Steve Judkins. He posted, he's in Seattle, and he posted that uh, he was out trying to fly in the wharf area, and someone came up to him and talked about, hey, you need a permit for this, a permit for that. Um, kind of like usual, where they kind of knew half of what they were supposed to be telling whoever was flying. Um, so we did a little research and found out that there's some very interesting language in the uh, Seattle Film Department, or Seattle Film Commission, excuse me, uh, on their website. So um, he reached out, and then um, Lee Bessing tagged me in the post, which was kind of cool, and uh, started the ball rolling. This was only three days ago, so it's been kind of fun. I reached out to the Film Commission via their website, and um, Taylor, I won't use his full name because I don't have permission, uh, reached back out to me almost right away, and... As you know, because you've done the same thing we do here at DSPA, when you're dealing with a public entity, whether it's a city council or a commission or state or whatever, they're not always happy to hear from you because yep. you're kind of telling them what they've done wrong. Um, and, but in this case, uh, I forwarded you the email that Taylor's like, yeah, we know it's not working real well. It's actually already on my list for next week or next year. Um, but... Do you have some people we can talk to? So that was really kind of cool that um, he was able to, to reach out or reach back, I should say, and just give us a chance, DSPA, local pilots, local flyers, a chance to really kind of put the word in on the way that the new rules are going to be crafted. Yep. The way they're crafted now, and he did say, I, one of the things I said, and I, I shouldn't have assumed something, you know what they say about assuming things, is I said, you know, this is what happens when you don't work with a pilot or work with a drone <laughs> operator. And he goes, well, we did. <laughs> it's like, oh, oops, sorry. Oops. <laughs> so, you know, we're all, we're all learning as we go. And, you know, so it's not safe to assume things, but that's okay. Um, but yep. apparently whoever they worked with had great, had great information, uh, the pilots they had. But um, I'm guessing... I'm not going to use the word assume. I'm guessing that um, they basically were big production guys because yeah. these rules are geared towards big production and are great for big production. I mean, they're spelled out, boom, bang, 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 bang. You know, do you do one, you do two, you do three, you do four. So it's great. It's got instructions for, this, for the location scout. It's got instructions for the production crew. It's really a really well-written film permit process if you're a production. What happened, yeah. though, is... is <laughs> It captured everybody else as well, including hobbyists. So um, they realized that uh, it, you know, the way it's written is every time you're, if you're, if you, let's say you're shooting real estate, I think the one numbers were, you can remind me, 2,100 uh, remote pilots in King County, which is where yep. Seattle is. There's a lot of them, and so every one of those who shoots a, a construction site, a real estate, anything like that, has to fill out a um, application a permit process for every single shoot on every single location. Um, so there was this catch-all issue. Um, and he even said, Taylor even said, you know, when people who real estate people reach out to me, they say, you know, we don't care. You, we don't need permits from you guys. So they understand the process. But it was really cool that Taylor reached out so quickly um, and have the ability to go ahead and um, 
get some input from those who really affect, including including recreational. So okay, um, yeah. he asked us. We put the word out in your group, and no, actually, yeah, in your group, it was already the word was already out. Um, yeah, in a couple of other groups, and also I was asked to join a uh, Northwest drone pilot group, and so I put the word out there as well. I think we have twelve pilots and recreational folks on this email list now, and we're going to get people like Free Fly and things like that that are up there, and. They're really going to, the film commission for their rewrite is really going to have a good sense of exactly which aspects of which drone operation, which drone vertical this affects. So this it's affects, really kind of yeah. cool to see that. And I uh, really want to thank Taylor. Again, I don't have permission to use his full name. So thank you, Taylor, uh, at the Seattle Film Commission for being, gosh, being so willing and easy to work with. Um, yep. After the first of the year, I'll go ahead and get this list to them and we'll get the process started. That's awesome. And, and this is exactly, you know, what we need in the community. We need, mm-hmm. um, we need people to, well, first off, I'm going to do my pitch for a DSPA because <laughs> <laughs> this, is, uh, this, is, this is the reason why you guys exist, right? You're a drone service provider alliance. You are helping drone service providers and in the meantime, also helping uh, recreational pilots. By the way, you said hobbyist. Uh, I know John at the FA is going to slap your fingers yeah. for saying hobbyist. Kevin's going to come slap my No, they're recreational. Sorry, Kevin. So, and, um, but 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 that's that's uh, that's really what you guys do. So I, I know I know uh, people see you on the show, and and sometimes I know people may not understand everything that you guys do. But this is you know behind the scene, you and I I know talk about once oh, a yeah. week on on at least one <laughs> issue uh, going on, and and we don't always talk about it. But I think this was a, g- a great example to bring on the show to talk about this. Now, can you talk to to the viewers that are watching and maybe don't understand what a film commission does? Because here uh-huh. we have a film commission in in Seattle, but there are other ones, especially in California. I know they're very active. And, and they have these things. So can you explain kind of what their role is, how they fall into sure, all of this? Sure. And Denver has one here too. So um, Denver is not very friendly to drones though. So we're working on that. Um, the, the film, if you're, if you're part of a big production, you've got to come in and you've got to pull a permit because if, if these movie crews and advertising crews and, 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 and independent film crews came in and just started throwing up stuff willy nilly, you're going to have streets blocked. You're going to have security issues, that kind of stuff. So, a film commission is kind of the clearinghouse for okay. You're going to be you're going to be on Broadway between 12th and 15th, and you need the west sidewalk closed for 20 minutes. Okay, here's the cops. Here's what we're going to do. Um, and then also, if there's 20 people standing on a corner with a whole bunch of gear, you're in the way. So yeah, film commissions have a very important job, um, mm-hmm. and we love working with them when we have to. And I know the production folks um, who probably watch this. Some of the ones you and I know, know uh, jointly, uh, really. Uh, well, I would say usually enjoy <laughs> working with film commissions. Sometimes they're a little onerous, but they're very necessary, especially in larger cities uh, like either Phoenix or Seattle or or Denver or basically the entire state of California. Yeah. So what you were proposing is, you know, this this role is great for larger uh, mm-hmm. film crews that have five or more. And what you were proposing is that, you know, this applies only to these people and then everybody else is kind of uh, bypasses the role. So I think that's a that's a great thing. And I also want to mention that, you know, uh, for those of you that are, are trying to advocate in your cities because there are s- uh, similar rules, obviously reach out to the, the Drone Service Provider Alliance, but I also remember... Um, remember that the approach that Vic had here, which is, I think, something that we can uh, multiply and, and duplicate in the uh, entire industry, is is being friendly and, and, and not being accusatory and basically saying, hey, let's work together on making this work for everyone. And I think that obviously works a lot better than going in there and, and you know, pounding your fist on the desk <laughs> and saying, you guys are screw ups and, you know. So um, something to remember, I think, for everyone in this industry, we, we can all uh, learn from that. Yeah, DSPA loves, I mean, our kind of philosophy, our, it's not even kind of, it is our philosophy of, we want to work cooperatively, not compatibly. Um, yep. in any, any, whether it's a local situation, whether, you know, Kenji and I are working and Scott are working with the FAA, I mean, wh- whatever that, I don't want to use the word adversarial, what, whatever the people we're working with, because they're not adversarial. Um, mm-hmm. We want to be like, hey, look, you know, we understand that this needs to happen, but this is what's going to happen because of it. So let's work together and find a common, uh, common cause. Yep. Um, you know, my, my, I'm, I'm Southern. And I don't hide that. My mom always said, you know, you get more flies with, with honey than vinegar. So mm-hmm. I think that's a good way to look at. Um, I mean, you still end up with flies, so I really don't understand. <laughs> I don't understand that. <laughs> but, um, you know, it, it's just be nice to people, and they'll, they'll almost always be nice to you back. 
Yep, I agree. Well, Vic, thank you for the insight. Thanks for everything you do. And then for those of you that want more information, dspalliance.org is where you'll find more information. And you'll find Vic all over well, <laughs> forums, Facebook. Uh, I don't think Vic sleeps. I think he just goes uh, online and answers people. I, yeah. so. <laughs> I have been up since 3 o'clock this morning because my brain started early. So oh, there you I have go. a very, well, very understanding wipe. So thank you very much, Chris, for not killing me in my sleep. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, appreciate it, Vic. And then we'll see you next time. All right. Take it easy. Fly safe. All right. The second story this week is kind of a big deal. But before I go into the details, uh, I'm going to explain a little bit of the process because I think it's, it's still pretty foreign for most people. When the FAA put out new regulation back in January or December of last year, almost a year ago now, the, they put out new regulation for flying over people. And in order to fly over people, you need to have a drone that is categorized either as category one, two, three, or four. Now, category one doesn't really need much of anything. It needs to be under 250 grams. It needs to have prop guards around it. And yes, those prop guards need to be calculated in the weight. And, uh, and then you're pretty much good to go flying over people, uh, as long as you don't do sustained flight over large areas, uh, large concentration of people. But anyway, the bottom line is to fly under category two or category three, you need to have a certain approved drone that is categorized as category two and category three. And in order to do this, the manufacturers of aircraft have to go through a certain type of testing. And that testing has to be approved by the FAA. So there's two different documents. There's what's called an MOC, means of compliance document. And then there's also a declaration of compliance. The first step is means of compliance. Means of compliance is this document that tells the FAA, hey, this is how we're going to test. This is the testing method that we're going to be using in order to make sure that this drone meets the requirement of the regulation. In the regulation, the FAA says you need to have a certain um, uh, kinetic energy uh, maximum for that aircraft. You need to uh, prove that there is no uh, safety uh, deficiencies with the aircraft, blah, blah, blah. There's a whole bunch of things. But before you can do that, before the manufacturers can do all that testing, they need to show the FAA their means of compliance, whatever way they're going to use to comply with the regulation. Well, up until now, there wasn't any means of compliance accepted up until this week. It was actually accepted back in October, but it didn't make it until uh, this week into the actual regulation. It needs to be published in the Federal Register. So if you don't know what to do and you can't sleep at night, read the Federal Register. It's a perfect place to do that. But in the Federal Register this week, we have a Virginia Tech um, uh, uh, created and was approved for a means of compliance. It means that they came up with an actual a uh, list of details of how they're going to be testing aircraft to make sure they meet the requirement of the regulation and make sure they can get stamped with this category two or category three approval. And, and this is a big deal, as you can expect, because, well, this was kind of the first step that everybody was waiting on. And, um, and, and well, it's been going on for a while now. Now, um, the regulation for flying over people is in effect, which means that once a manufacturer uh, contacts Virginia Tech. Now, this is the next step. A manufacturer says, now I have a, a let's say DJI, I have a Mavic 2, I have a, a Mavic Air 2S or a Mavic 3, and I want to get that uh, in compliance. Then they're going to send that drone and they're going to work with Virginia Tech to uh, get that drone tested. VT is going to do all the testing. They're going to provide the data to the manufacturer, DJI in this case, or hotel or whoever you want. And then that data is going to be submitted to the FAA. The FAA is going to review it. And then they're going to give the final product, which is the DOC, the Declaration of Compliance. So to keep this simple, to keep this simple, there's two different pieces of paperwork. MOC, means of compliance. We just got one of these approved. It doesn't matter to you because you can't do anything with it. The manufacturers are going to do use that means of compliance to get their drone approved under a declaration of compliance. That declaration of compliance is going to look like it's going to be make and model specific. So it's going to say the Mavic 3 has been approved for flying over whatever, or the Hotel Evo 2 has been approved as a category two or as a category three. And that's going to show up on the FAA website. So the bottom line is, this is good news because now we have a step, we have a, a method to make this happen. And hopefully soon we will see drones that are compliant and can fly over people because they're category two or category three. That was just a very long story to say all that. So let's move on to the next story. 
All right. The next story this week is uh, this is cool. This is a follow up to something we've talked about several times in the past, and this is the drone Ingenuity that's on Mars right now. It's been on Mars for quite a while, actually. It's been on Mars for eight months, and nobody ever expected that this thing was going to last this long. They were actually planning to do five flights. They weren't even sure that we're going to be able to do one flight, and now. We are at 17 flights. They've done over 30 minutes of uh, flight time. This is 30 minutes and 48 seconds. And, uh, and this thing is still flying strong, which is absolutely amazing. So they've been able to collect a ton of data. And, uh, and it's, it's funny, the, uh, the, the program uh, team lead said, uh, few, <laughs> few thought that we would make it to flight one, fewer to still to five, and uh, no one thought that we would make it this far. So it's pretty cool. Uh, I think it's pretty exciting that they finally uh, burned uh, through one uh, Mavic battery battery or, uh, or one <laughs> Mini 2 battery, uh, but no, I think this is really exciting. Uh, they're, they're getting a lot of data. If you remember, the design of this drone is, is really cool. It's two different propellers flying uh, in, in different uh, 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 speed, a different rotation, and they're able to collect a ton of data flying up there. So this, I think, will bring uh, a lot of uh, good information back down to Earth for us to help uh, create uh, vehicles that are going to be flying on Mars in the future. All right, and the last update this week is uh, trust. We uh, actually are the number one trust provider in the country. We got an email from the FAA this week. Uh, we've provided 41,000 uh, trust certificates since we began doing this in, I think, the end of June of this year. Um, so number one trust provider, thank you guys. This is all because of you. Uh, we also just reached 35,000 uh, remote pilot certificate trained on our website and also 125,000 students. So these numbers are not nothing. These are all because of you guys. So we appreciate your support. I know a lot of you are sharing in forums to use our trust website, and, and we appreciate that. We uh, spend a lot of time trying to make it very user-friendly, and, uh, and, and it's showing, apparently. So thanks for your support. And uh, this is it, really, all I have this week. I wanted to add one more thing, because uh, this, is the, uh, this is the holidays, right? And, uh, and people are going to be getting drones under the Christmas tree. And I'm going to ask you to do something. If you're watching this, you're probably fairly well educated now about drones, or you might be brand new as well, but um, be a mentor. Be a mentor to someone who got a drone. Um, show people what they need to do. Trust is the perfect example, right? Trust is easy. It's free. It's very quick to do, but it's going to give you an idea of the information that uh, you need or, or the rules that you need to follow to be safe flying your drone. Um, I'm going to put a link down here, which is uh, to a free course. It's called Recreational Flying Made Easy. It's kind of like uh, a trust version, but on steroids. We have videos that are easy to follow. Uh, trust is great, but it's also a lot of text. And so uh, this course gives you all the information you need, not only to get the information from trust, but also to get more information, such as how do you submit a lens request, uh, how do you verify that you are flying in the right spot or that you can or can't fly in that area. So uh, if you know anyone, just give them a link. This is a free course. This is something that we do for the community. Also make sure that people are registering their drones. Again, it's $5. Okay, $5. That's it. And it's done on the FA Drone Zone website. If you don't see a .gov at the end, you're in the wrong place. There are people out there trying to steal your money and uh, and pretending to be the FA. So don't fall for that. And, uh, and when you're done, we have free stickers that you can get from us as well. So if you get a new drone for Christmas, go to pilotinstitute.com slash free and you'll be able to get all of your stickers for your drones for free. We'll send them over and, uh, and you'll have that under the Christmas tree or uh, right as you take the Christmas tree down. All right, that's all I have for you this week. Uh, next week is the last show of the year. So we'll do actually a quick recap of everything we've talked about and the cool stories that we uh, covered for those 52 or 51 episodes uh, this year. So uh, be safe, Merry Christmas, and then I'll see you guys next week.